In this tutorial, we're going to talk about the Whisper Reporter cloaking feature, which is a pretty cool feature. A lot of uh, inspectors really like this because it can really save time in by embedding these inside your master template. So let's go ahead and create a new report, and we'll just use a one of the templates we have in our database that's not so blank to start with. And if we go into foundations here, you'll see that there's a bunch of uh, information in here. Now, of course, this particular template shows a bunch of checkboxed items, which you don't have to do with your report that way, but this particular template is set up that way. So, But you'll also see that there's some additional text in here. We could highlight this text. Now, of course, this would typically be done in the master template, so every time you start a new inspection, it would already be like that to begin with. But what you would do is you would highlight this text. There's a cloak button on the toolbar. It's right here. And as you can see, what's happened is the text that I simply highlighted and cloaked now is grayed out. It's also kind of underlined in gray as well to let you know that there's something special about it. I could even come down here to this other text. I could cloak that as well. Okay, so what this allows you to do is in your master template throughout wherever you want. Again, we're just we're using the Texas template like we've done a few of the other uh, tutorials, but uh, it could be any type of template. It could be any um, type of inspection report. It could be a uh, phase inspection, it could be commercial inspection, whatever. But here we have these items that we have now cloaked. If I was to generate this report, these items will not show up. And let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and generate the report. Now, we're in edit mode right now, so you really can't see the output. So if we'll go to print preview, which will give you a pretty good idea what this is going to look like. We have our auditing thing, auditing uh, report there. If we scroll down, here's the foundation section. You'll notice that there was a block of text here and below here. They're both gone because they're cloaked. If I go back to foundations, which by the way I can do by leaving the preview window open, I can then highlight or actually I'm not highlighting, I'm clicking on it to select it. So now the cloaked item is uncloaked. If I click this, it's uncloaked. If I tell Whisper to uh, save this information, it should cause our preview window to be automatically repopulated. And you'll now notice that those two paragraphs are in view, which is pretty slick. Uh, that way you can include things in the template that are always there, but they're grayed out, and people will not see it unless you click on it. That's right, just one click of the mouse, and it'll bring it into view. So let's create another report, and we'll use a different template this time, one that has some cloak stuff in it to begin with. I'll click OK, and you will see here in Foundations, it's similar to what we had before, except these checkboxed items have been rearranged. Uh, some folks don't like a checkbox approach, and one of the reasons is they don't like to see empty checkboxes sitting on a report. Uh, in this particular case, they're all pre-checked, and they're all cloaked. So none of these will show up in the output unless you uh, uncloak them. So as you can see, I've just selected three of them. All the rest of them remain cloaked, including some items below. And if I click on the printer, and I go to preview and of course we have our auditing system. I'll click continue and here's our preview window. If we go down to foundations you'll see that very nicely these um, other checkboxed items that are cloaked are um, eliminated and everything is collapsed real nicely so that it looks like this is all that was ever there to begin with. So everything uh, shows up real nice. Let's go ahead and close that. Now, the way we did these, I'll show you real quick. There was a little bit of a trick involved in this. Um, most of the time, when you insert a checkbox, we have a checkbox item on the toolbar up here. And when you click on this uh, checkbox item, you will notice that we have a checkbox. And then, of course, you can enter whatever you want after that. But this is an actual active checkbox. If I click on it, it'll actually check. And if I ch click it again, it'll uncheck. Well, 
let's get rid of that because what we did here for the cloaked items is something a little different. Uh, in this particular case, you'll notice that when they're cloaked, they don't show up anyway. So all we really did is we went up to the character map button on the toolbar, went down to the um, to the Wingdings font. There's a lot of strange things in the Wingdings font, which should come with all windows. Not sure if it's on the Mac or not, but you'll notice down here in the bottom right, there's a checkbox item. And I'm going to click OK and that will in, in embed it here. Now I'm going to make that a little bigger. I think we want 13. So there it is. And then again we can say test. So what I've done is I've entered a character which represents a checked checkbox followed by some text. And of course that text got a little too big. So let's make it back to 10. Now we have the actual item that we want. I'll just highlight the whole line and cloak it. Now it's just like everything else. If I click it, it comes into view and it looks like it's checked. And if I cloak it, it never shows up. So that's pretty much the way cloaking works. Uh, in some ways it's very powerful. And maybe you can uh, find a way to include cloaking in your template. So that concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.